and welcome to RC Cincy. Today I wanted to do an update on all my construction equipment. Uh, hopefully you guys saw the build series on the Bobcat, uh, chapter one, two, and three. Um, and they're still kind of prototyping, experimenting, and adjustments. It's constantly going to change and evolve and hopefully it's going to get better. So I, I've already done some work to it. Um, so originally, oh, there's a lot of little glue strands here. I clean it up a little bit. Originally, uh, this servo was on top of that little brace back here, and it was sticking out to here. And what was happening is when the bucket was rolling, it was hitting it. So I put it. I removed that little um, bracket that was here and put it flush with this arm as best as I could. I put glue on the bottom all sides. I put two zip ties. And then I also put a piece of plastic and then glued it, created a brace on this side. What happens is this literally twists from the torque. That's why you may be better off with a nine, um, nine uh, gram, kilogram all metal servo than a 17 on the front. That's, it's too much. And it's, look how big it is too. So honestly, um, this is fine for the prototype. Uh, you know, it, it is more, it is more visible this way because it was down a little bit further it's up a little bit higher plus with this piece it just looks bigger so it's not it's not the worst looking one but it's not the best looking one either uh, i'm fine with it like that honestly i don't mind uh it works um it does what it's supposed to it gave me more tilt and lift and that's what i want i didn't feel like i didn't have enough tilt and lift uh now it's working a lot better um the back, I adjusted it because it was going too far down and it was shoving the servo and making it move. So I just did some adjustment um, as far as the uh, positioning, like how far it goes down. So now it has more lift and it doesn't go all the way down and bottom out. So you just got to see how it moves, right? Uh, for me. And of course, I went, by the way, um, I had it wrong. I had it in the middle and they're both springy. That's not what you want. You want mode one, which will give this ability to just stay in position. So you want mo mode one on your transmitter. This will allow your arm to freely go up and down, no problem. And you can go slow or you can go fast. Obviously you can put Expo to make it a lot smoother. That'll make a huge difference in rates. Maybe you can do like a rate switch and then maybe you can do an Expo switch. So that's the nice part about having a multi-channel uh, transmitter. Uh, as far as the roll goes, it is improved. You can see how much more. That's, that's the roll all the way back, which you can see when you're lifting and driving. It's more than enough. And as far as dumping goes, that should allow you to dump and dig as well. So it is slightly better. Not the biggest difference. Uh, when I let it go, it's flat, so it won't dump out as well. Uh, it is much, much better. Uh, it's not twisting. This is much stronger in general. Even for weight and lifting, this won't flex because of that little brace right there. Because uh, it's hot glued on this side with Velcro, uh, with um, two zip ties. And then I put two pieces of thick plastic in here and then glued them all the way around. So that basically strengthened and stiffened. Look at that. Stiffened the front up. Huge difference. Maybe you could do that cleaner with like a little black a little brace. Maybe lower down here behind the servo with the smaller 9 kilogram servo. That's what I would do if I could do it over again. Obviously, on the next one, um, I'm going to do it a lot cleaner. I may even try to put the servo underneath here on this back side, like on this back side of it, and then link it somehow from underneath. I think that would be much more interesting, more hidden, look better, and then laying the servo flat and then building a cover over it so you can't even see it in the back. So it's all about just learning from it, um, doing proto, you know, doing whatever you can to make it better. Um, Honestly, I'm not going back from the 1200 milliamp battery. That one fits better. It adds so much weight that literally I could tip it like this and it still wants to come back. So it gave it way more weight. It's, I mean, this thing is over a pound. I guarantee it. it is, it's got some weight to it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can weigh it. It's heavy with that battery in there, which I love. So that's it for the Bobcat. And then um, the rest of the electronics came uh, yesterday. I just didn't get a chance to do a video. So I originally ordered two ESCs separate, a two-in-one, two servos, right? I already had the two receivers. So I put a four channel in here. And then I thought for my next one, I want to do it differently. So the original one, I used a two-in-one, which is great. It does have the 
the function where they counter and steer against each other. Sometimes that could be a little bumpy depending on what surface you're on. So I figured, why not for the second build, do two separate ESCs? That way I can do an off and on switch. I could do an off and on switch anyways, but I'll get into that later. Um, you know, I can link these, whatever power I need power to get power to them. It's got break and no break. Um, I'll probably remove the power supply going to it and just use an accessory wire. So that may power it. Uh, I think I'm, I'll have to give it its own power, but I do need the uh, accessory wire uh, for sure. So I won't be giving power to the receiver from both of them. So I won't burn it out. So I got to watch that. So it'll just be an accessory wire. I'll roll, I'll roll up the rest of it neatly and just keep it circle wrapped right here um as far as the uh back i'm still gonna go with the seven i wouldn't go as big as a 17 a 12 should fit flat underneath there you won't see it i would probably go with like a 12 or so a nine would be okay but i think i'd go with like a 12 just a little bit smaller this is just a tiny bit too big obviously if you lay it flat in there there are other ways of doing it i know but like i like the power this has so there's nothing wrong with going 17 i'd maybe cut it down to a 12 and then for the front, for sure, I would never use another big one like that again. I'd go with a nine. For the bucket roll, all you need is a nine. This is all metal, you can see through it. You can see that it's all metal. Very nice servo, digital, all metal, very cheap. Uh, I got two of these from Amazon. I have them in a link below. There's another one laying over there and it comes with a bag of accessories. So that's nice. And then obviously the big one for the heavier one. Uh, obviously your choice, uh, I linked a transmitter and a receiver that is a six channel. So it's going to allow you to do lights and it's also going to allow you to do a sound module if you'd like. So that's why I wanted to do six channel. It'll just fully dress it up. If you take your time with it, you can make it extremely nice. Uh, I had the six channel laying around. So this one has one through four and then it also has gear, which is a fifth. And then it also has auxiliary gear is the one I'm going to use for the sound box. So I can make these the master and make the sound box a slave. So for each sound, it'll be a different function or it may have come with wires depending which one you get. And then obviously the auxiliary is going to be a switch for my lights. Uh, so I am going to use a six channel. I've already bind this. It does work. Every one of these components works perfectly. So it's already been bound and tested. Always plug up your electronics like so, obviously with the battery. This is the 500. Uh, I recommended the 800. There's nothing wrong going to 800. If you could fit something bigger, but obviously think about it. If you're gonna put lights and sound module in there, you're not gonna probably be able to fit a 1200 like that. So the 800 is gonna be slightly bigger than this. It's gonna give it more power than this, and it should be able to fit. So that's why I still have that linked, obviously JST. Um, I could have stole one of these switches because I don't need both. I could just link them, right? And just use one switch and stole one and put it on this. I didn't honestly care for the off and on switch. Uh, I went ahead and actually glued and filled in that. I'm gonna use black marker paint over that. Uh, I still need to do a lot of touch up to it and a lot of little fixes here and there, but it is fully working. Uh, and just cover that up. That is sealed. That won't allow water or dirt or anything to get in here. That's a nice little closed door. There's no gaps anywhere else, really. That's going to get covered in the back. So we shouldn't have no issue of dirt or anything getting in there. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't drive in the water. It's not waterproof uh, or mud or anything like that. Nice, clean topsoil. This thing will have a hood in it. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to share that with you. Uh, so that is as far as this project. So this will be uh, technically... Bobcat number two. Uh, I'll probably change the battery to at least 8800 or bigger. We'll see what I can fit, depending on what the sound box and the lights. It's for sure going to get lights. We'll see on the sound box on the cost and size, okay? Uh, these little bits that came with it. Uh, and the second video is where I had the two in one uh, linked in, uh, uh, put in the description below. I will in this video link these separate ones, and I'll also link the servos, and I'll also link the same transmitter, the uh, 800 milliamp batteries, uh, basically everything that was in the second video. Uh, and I'll also link the other one if you want the two-in-one instead of these two. Whichever way you want to go, that's perfectly fine. Sorry, I woke up my computer. It is a little, it uh, should be fine. Uh, and then as far as this machine, the 336, uh, I did get a new part for it. This is the uh, AliExpress $15 Quick Disconnect. It is just nice because it has two hooks, quick disconnect, that's all I wanted. It does have a little play side to side. 
simple, just some washers, no big deal. I wish they would have included it, and I wish this was black as well. No big deal. I'm going to undo it, take all the screws off. I'm going to paint this black so it matches that and the rest of this, like a flat black. I probably have a Rust-Oleum something that has primer and corrosive uh, prevent or inhibitors, rust inhibitors in it. Uh, so that's cool. Um, the quick disconnect, it came with these screws. I'll probably paint these black or change this setup in general. Not 100% sure yet. Make sure you watch your diameter. The original pins are too thick to go into the quick disconnect. That's why they give you these. The original pins that came with the Cobalite. Obviously, you get thinner ones that look more scale. I may do that as well. So this slides in here. You cannot close this, unfortunately, unless you push the button. I wish that wasn't the case because I would love to be able to pick it up and then push down and click it. It will not happen. Nope. So you got to push the button. Releases it. Close it. It locks in, done. Obviously, to release it, you just press it, and it slides right out. Works really well. Uh, this side of it fits perfect. There's just this side on here. Needs a couple washers. No big deal. Here's another cool thing is your original 1550, 580, 594, 592, or 93. I can't remember anymore. And the WL Toys 16800. All of them... So they have similar buckets, at least the 580 and the WL Toys and the 1550. 100% sure that they will fit. So you just put the pins in them that come with it. You tighten them up and you are going to need spacers. But this one will clip on without uh, you pushing a button. So if you can line it up and then just push down, it'll clip. But it, then it won't release. It's going to need spacers on both sides, which is no problem. I can do that. And then some spacers down here. I thought about just removing this pin, this caliber pin, one of them, painting it black and just replacing one of them. So you can literally, it's because of the threads, that's why. See how smooth that is? That's just allowing it to sneak by. See what I'm saying? So I would love to have a smooth pin for the back so I can literally go pop, push down, clips in, and then dig obviously with this one. So we're gonna address that. I'm gonna make it to where I can do that with both of them. Uh, paint everything that's not black, make everything look more scale. So that is the 336. Uh, I love this machine. Uh, I haven't done anything else to it besides obviously the videos you've seen, like the weights, checked for leaks, flushed it, quick disconnect. And then obviously I did a video where I showed you guys some of the uh, stuff I already got for it. For instance, you've seen the three mil hydraulic line, right? And then I did receive a couple more things. So uh, I think one of the most important things besides checking your fluid, besides checking for leaks first and then checking the quality of your fluid, I would change it regardless. Besides those two things automatically done, that's what I would do. Uh, this is the next best thing before the quick disconnect, even in my opinion. Yes, this is $15. This is more. So this is the Cobalite 10,000 milliamp replacement battery. has the same little sleeve pull out, same connector. You have to do nothing but charge it, throw it in the excavator. You're ready to rock. So that's why I love this battery. 10,000 milliamp is huge. This gets 40 to 50 minutes. Imagine having double that. So when you're having a good time, you're at an event or digging with your buddies, you don't want to have one pack run out. We'll have to wait for a charge or throw in a small, smaller pack. This way, uh, you know, you're good to rock. Uh, I purchased this from uh, enginedyi.com. If you use the coupon 2022, you'll get an extra 8% off. This was $49.99, and the cool part is, uh, with that discount off, it's shipping is free, no taxes, so it'll be cheaper than what I got it for because I forgot to put the coupon in, so you'll get a better deal, and it's free shipping. Now, on the other side, you may have it for $39 or $49, but by the time you add in shipping and everything, it's going to be more. So this is the cheapest I found it at, was enginedyi.com. Same thing with the machine. You may see prices that are $1,100, $1,200, but by the time you add shipping into it, Guess what? You're fourteen fifteen again. This one was one thousand two hundred seventy six with the fifty dollars shipping plan, which I wanted to be safe. Now, if I would remove the fifty dollars shipping plan, it only been twelve twenty something, twelve twenty. I forget what it was. So yeah, that's why this, in my opinion, is the best uh, entry level hydraulic machine. Period. So there you have it, the battery. And then I also bought these. Now, truth be told. I had an idea for these. I was gonna tap into my block and run a piece of line to like a filter or a pressure thing and then connect it to another fitting, which is gonna send it into this one of these lines. 
and it'll be like me getting filtration or me getting pressure MPA, right? Uh, but honestly, uh, this size right here, this can do three and four. That's what's so unique about it. This can do three and four. This unscrews just like so. You slide on your um, hose. Sometimes if they're really tiny, you can't get them on. You just warm it up a little bit with a lighter. Just warm it up. Don't melt it. And then slide it on. And then, of course, have this already on that side. And then slide this over and tighten this up. This will help seal that. Uh, you, can, uh, you can use something for that, which I'll show you in a second. Same thing here, you can use something for that, which I'll show you in a second. There's a little rubber ring, and this screws on. Now, these are larger. They're supposed to be the same, tappable to three, and then I think it's five on this side, so I think these technically will screw in there. They're just larger, not scale. But when you're in a pinch, or you need to connect, let's say, to your block, and you need to connect to something else, uh, they'll work. Obviously, I'm gonna get some smaller ones, but it's nice to have these. I wanted them, they're very, very cheap. I got a whole bag of them, so I thought, why not? Good price. If I'm already buying the um, other stuff from AliExpress, I might as well buy this as well. So, and then finally, uh, I got this off of Amazon. This is what I recommend for any fitting, anything you touch on your hydraulic machine. Hopefully you have some of this. This is Loctite 545. This is the thread sealer for hydraulic lines. That's what it's designed for. So anytime one of these pieces go into a block or into here, or the side that I unthreaded that had the threads right there, uh, put on any kind of thread that seals hydraulic. Put a little bit, goes a long way. This stuff is purple. It is amazing. You can use it on real machines. This is not just for RC. This is actually hydraulic thread sealer for real machines as well. Uh, a big bottle like this, I think, is like close to 20 or around 20. I can't remember exactly. Uh, Amazon sells this all day long. You can buy it at other shops and stores and out of zones, probably, I would imagine. So uh, I'd probably just get it from Amazon just to make sure they have it in stock before you drive around. So before I break any line or change or even change these two kinked lines right here, these lines right here, I have something completely for it, which is coming from another website, which is going to be another day. So I am going to use this stuff. Uh, there's just two small kinks. It's not affecting its performance. It's just ugly. That's what's bothering me. It's not affecting a darn thing. It's still digging smooth. Ever since I changed the fluid in it, it is so much better. I can't emphasize that enough. Put a high quality fluid that is better lubrication, better uh, pressure, better seal life, better fluid life, just better everything. Change the fluid. But anywho, um, so use this stuff. And then I have one, two, three. I have like another two or three items for this at least. Uh, coming from another website, so I've dealt with AliExpress uh, and Amazon so far getting stuff for this. Now, and eBay. The sticker sheets were from eBay. Uh, I have other stuff coming from another website. It, it is a Swedish company. It's like Wix U or W-I-X. That's what it starts with, something like that. Uh, a gentleman mentioned it on my channel. I've already ordered stuff from there. I just uh, want to like, say what it is in a video. Um, it's particularly for this, and they have tons of stuff for it. There's a couple other manufacturers that sell stuff for it. You just gotta, you know, look around. There's plenty of websites and manufacturers that sells different attachments for different ones than this. Uh, honestly, with the spacers in there, and this stiffens up, so it's not loose, we're golden. And obviously, painting it, and then obviously, probably stealing one of these skinnier pins that's smoother, so I can be able to just push down and lock it in. Uh, I'm obviously going to paint these as well. I'm going to paint all the bolts and nuts and just make it all legit. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to do that. I think it'll be nice having a quick disconnect that you can just not have a bucket. You can use these hoops and then hook up my scale change with my little figures, move pipe work, just do a bunch of work. I have a full construction site. I cannot wait to share that with you guys. And now that I have this bobcat, 100% honesty, like I put the guy, like, like if you sit in there, it's barely, barely, barely. Like if this was 116 scale, this would be like... 117 scale it's so close that it doesn't bug me this is a very large machine don't let it fool you the guy sits down his pedals go down here from here with his feet going down up to the top if i adjusted a guy there is no clear window so it doesn't matter because all my electronics in here but like it won't be bad this being on the side it looks i think pretty cool and the fact that i can play with some dirt kind of backfill some pipe jobs or whatever i'm doing uh i'm gonna play with it i may do the construction stuff and then i'll just have fun I'll just do a, I'm definitely doing its first dig video for sure, 100%. And then I'm going to put it through tests and stuff, see how it performs and how capable it is, right? I like to know. First, I'm going to do the first dig video, make sure it's showing you how it does before I put it to some torture test and I break it. Uh, that's why I really, really want two more of these. 
One will be completely brand new, sealed in a box. From once I completely get my uh, my prototype dialed in, uh, the next one is getting these electronics. Minus probably the only thing that's going to change, honestly, is the battery. I'm probably going to go a little bit bigger, but it's going to have the six channel. It's going to probably have lights, and it may have a sound box depending on the size. It's going to have separate ESCs because I feel like I can control one side instead of doing the twist turn. I can control one side and one side. It'll be a little bit smoother when you have a load. Uh, off and on switch. Basically, otherwise, it's the same thing. I think it's going to give it a little more power, though, drive-wise. I think that one is in here is a uh, 2x5, so it's 5 amps per motor. These can push 10. So you got to watch out on these little motors. <laughs> the 2-in-1 might be a better deal. Let me be the one to experiment with these, please, before you burn out your Bobcat. Uh, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Uh, Amazon's got it for like 47 uh, eBay's got it for 45 That is crap because I bought this for $20. From Menards. I looked on Menards. I did not see it. I did see a front loader though. I think is 116 scale. I think if they're correct on that. I'm really curious about that loader. Let me know guys in the comments below. If you want to see a loader converted, that would be awesome. It's got some rinky dink cheap ass little controller. Uh, it's cheap. like, But it's got the drive motors. I can just hook up these to it. And then I can just throw some servers on and a receiver and a battery and we're rocking. So that's why I like these because that way you ain't got to sit there and make cogs and put, you know, drive shafts all the way through it. And just, it's even more ridiculous than it should be. The Brewer ones are hard to do. I thought about doing one. I'm like, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll find one that I really, really like. Like the crone, like the crane truck. I would love to do something like that, but that's going to be a lot of work. So, but uh, there's that. So I think I covered everything I needed to. This video, I'm sure, is long enough. Oh, yeah, we need to end it there. I'm trying to cut them down, but I just, I love talking about RCs. So I'll make sure to check out the full list. Uh, you can go to the second build video. It has the 2 in 1 and some stuff listed uh, and the controller and everything. I'll try to relist the 2 in 1, these as well, the servos, the two batteries. The controller and the receiver for like 60 bucks so i'll try to put everything on there just in case you want to do this i uh, i think well no i had expensive shipping so if i could find these some of these at menards uh, i'll probably grab a few i would love honestly dude i have so many rcs but the problem is shipping now like i would love to give away rcs but the shipping's like two to three times more than the product's worth it makes no sense to do it that way if i do uh, gift cards are getting old. I've done like I don't know how many gift cards. Like, I would love to maybe purchase something from a website and then just whoever's name I pick just have it shipped to their house. So it's like free shipping or whatever. I maybe do it that way. Just shipping now is absolutely redonkulous. Like it, it's not even cool. So yeah. So six channels. Here we go. Upgrades again. More stuff's gonna get done. I can't wait. I don't think I think this is gonna be what it's gonna be. Besides, you know, cosmetic stuff to make it look a little nicer. Like, this is a monster. I love this one with that battery. Uh, just because just it's running, you know, two, it's running that two in one. It's running, you know, we can handle that bigger, but well, it doesn't matter about the battery, but yeah, just the 17s. Honestly, I w definitely, definitely recommend going with the smaller one, easier to deal with, easier to tuck, plenty of power for dumping. Is this still on? That's what I love about it, too. Like, it doesn't make any noise, it doesn't even know if it's on. Like, <laughs> like like you don't understand having two 17 gram servos and reinforcing the front of it like if I had a full pop can I'd put it on here like it does not care I, mean, ooh, I rolled the bucket the wrong way let me hold the bucket back And I was like, oh, no problem, I'm not going to lift this. Ah, oh, I stayed in her. I don't think you guys understand, like, <laughs> the power it's got, like. And it's, like, it's pretty strong because this, this is metal and that's metal. Obviously, this is a, that's pretty thick plastic on both sides. There's a little support beam. I, I'm glad I stiffened up the front. It used to like bend and wobble like look at that. it's much much more stiffer by doing that. I'm so glad I did that brace another brace at least it still has this one right here and it obviously still has that one right there it did have these little things that stuck out and I cut it so the servo would be flush up against here 
I could figure out this linkage. I think I'm gonna get a different linkage. I should be able to roll this bucket back all the way to here and then roll it all the way down. So I'm improving on that. I'm gonna adjust it in the radio, obviously, too. A lot of that's learning to adjust it and set it up properly. So guys, it's... <laughs> it never gets old. And then you can do it slow. Obviously, it needs expo, but like... Yeah, I'm excited. So there you have it, guys. Uh, let's put the let's put the boom down. <laughs> uh, there you have it. The good old Bobcat. So that's gonna do it for this video. Long enough. Oh, I said that already. Uh, thank you for all the new subscriptions. I truly appreciate it. Uh, I try to do my best to reply to folks. If you have any comments, ideas, suggestions, anything you want to share, as long as it's family friendly, please do. So it's community about helping each other out to improve stuff. Uh, the other one is going to be more detailed in the building. The third part was just so stressful and so much work that I just figured to show you afterwards. The next one is literally, I may have to just do the video and just like fast forward, like as I'm doing stuff. So you see actually every single step, uh, I may do that. Just have an editor, just edit the video, like just shoot it normal or whatever, and then have him speed up to the parts when I'm getting or doing something that's obvious just to kind of move it along. And then that one will be a little more detailed. I've already know exactly what steps because I've had to experiment. Like I took everything apart, had to do, you don't have to do all that. Like you have to just get rid of these things, smooth the little bucket here. I've already done the video on that, but I'll redo it and to show you everything that it's not that bad. You guys could do it if you have a little, you know, if you're a little mechanically inclined and you can work on stuff, um, you know, this bolt's common, that piece of wire's common, the rest of these you can easily get. There's no reason why someone that likes tinkering couldn't do something like this. Obviously, you're modding at your own risk. If you buy this and you break it and the electronics work and you break the electronics, that's on you guys. Uh, <laughs> I guess I got to do that uh, spiel every once in a while, letting people know, like, you're modding at your own risk. It's never a guarantee. Yours might turn out 10 times better or might turn out worse. I don't know. Probably better, but, but you know, so uh, I absolutely love this RC, man. It's, it's just a beast. Um, I love it. It... <laughs> Like, I, I got it set up to where I can really, like, dig. Like, look how much that goes down. Look at that. Look how far that, that's up. That's going to dig. So I'm curious to see how much dirt it can move. The only thing I messed up on is <laughs> I kept adjusting it. And when I built this brace, it stopped letting this flex wide. And I couldn't get the screw in there with the screwdriver. I would have to literally make a hole, which I don't want to do. So what I did, I put a dab of hot glue where like the metal meets the plastic, like where the screw goes. So I'm hoping it keeps it from, uh, yeah, it looks like it's going. Hopefully it keeps it from popping off. That's all, all I want. Obviously I could fit the screw in the back one. So that was one mess up. Hopefully you guys can figure something out for that. It's still going down too far. I need to uh, see like right there is when it should. See it's hitting. Forcing the plastic down. So, and it's making it causing the server to move. So, like, that should be its limit right there. So, I have that much room. See how it goes even further? So, it's like forcing the servo down. That's just, and that way, if I move this plastic thing up a little bit, then it may give me more lift, too. So, it's just a matter of squaring it away. Like I said, it works. It just needs little adjustments, little touch ups, and little details. So, that's it, guys. <laughs> Let's end it here. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all you guys checking out the channel. Please feel free to see my other mods and projects and stuff. Uh, comment below what else you want to see on the channel. Let me know if you want, want me to do a loader or just a much better, cleaner, more in-depth video for the Bobcat. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Peace.